These days, most animals you encounter tend to be on the smaller side. Sure, there are notable exceptions such as elephants, giant squids and that insanely enormous blue whale. However, back in the good old days of yore, you know, the millions of years before human civilization dominated the globe, the ancestors of today's animals grew to proportions so monstrously enormous that even Indiana Jones might faint. Get ready to see all your favorite animals in a completely new light. The Pleistocene kangaroo, Protocoptodon golia, the most extreme of the short-faced kangaroos, was the largest and most heavily built kangaroo known. It had an unusually short flat face and forwardly directed eyes with a single large toe on each foot. Each hand had two long clawed fingers that would have been used to bring leafy branches within reach. Protocoptodon golia is known from a variety of habitats, mainly semi-arid areas of New South Wales and South Australia. Many parts of its range were harsh environments, characterized by vast areas of treeless, wind-blown sand dunes. The complex teeth of Protocopted Angolia tell us that it was a browser rather than a grazer, able to handle the tough leaves and stems typical of arid and semi-arid environments. It would have used its long forelimbs to grasp branches and bring them close for feeding. Like all marsupials, Protocoptodon would have had tiny, hairless young that developed to maturity in a pouch after birth. Protocoptodon golia would have stood no more than 2 meters in height, roughly comparable in height to a large red kangaroo, but much more robust in build. Fossils of Protocoptodon are usually more abundant, suggesting that it was a very successful species until its decline and eventual extinction about 15,000 years ago. Meganeura is an extinct genus of giant insects that lived during the Carboniferous and Permian periods. It was one of the largest flying insects ever to exist. The name translates as large veins, a reference to the network of veins that supported the insect's wings like a skeleton and supplied oxygen. The wingspan of the massive dragonfly has been estimated to be around 25.6 to 28 inches, 65 to 70 centimeters. Their wings were crisscrossed with a network of veins. Even though they are similar to present-day dragonflies, they were significantly larger and more robust. 300 million years ago, oxygen was 35% of the atmospheric composition, so scientists believe this contributed to the incredibly large size of the Meganeura. Meganeura was an obligate carnivore with highly evolved bulging eyes, sharp chewing mouth parts, and a diverse diet. The large eyes allowed the massive insect to search for prey. Also, given its enormous size, it could pick from a wide variety of insects and eat small amphibians and other vertebrates. At that time, amphibians like frogs and toads were still getting used to a terrestrial lifestyle. This would have made it easy for the Meganeura to catch and prey on them. Meganeura became extinct at the end of the Permian period about 250 million years ago. The Permian extinction memorably wiped out 90% of the Earth's species. Changes in atmospheric conditions were the major cause of this event. Scientists suggest that the fall of the oxygen composition to 21% in the air relative to what it was 300 million years ago made the Meganeura go extinct. Gigantopithecus blackie is described and recreated as a large ape resembling a large version of a gorilla. Although the massive gorilla description works well for popular appeal, this animal was closer to an orangutan in appearance and ancestry. Still, Gigantopithecus is estimated to have been around 25% larger than modern-day gorillas. Paleoanthropologists suggest that the animal would have weighed in the ballpark of 600 to 660 pounds and stood at a hopping 9 feet tall. It is also supposed that Gigantopithecus displayed strong sexual dimorphism. This occurs when a species' male and female individuals display significantly different sizes and attributes. Females might have been significantly smaller than males, which makes it tough to get accurate estimates of size based on fossil records. Because Gigantopithecus does not show signs of pitting, researchers think it might have had a generalist diet and could have lived in a variety of environments. It is likely that this generalist diet would have included things like bamboo shoots, roots and stems. These individuals would have lived there from the early Pleistocene through the most of the middle Pleistocene, according to the fossil record. This means they existed from roughly 2 million years ago to 300,000 years ago. Evidence suggests that Gigantopithecus died out roughly 300,000 years ago in the middle Pleistocene or Chibanian era. 
During this time, dense forest retreated southward in the face of intensifying monsoons and the general cooling of the area. The regions that Gigantopithecus would have occupied turned into savannas that laid the way for many of the large ungulates of the late Pleistocene. Ancient sea scorpions belong to a group of large arthropods called Eurypterids. These ancient animals are the largest arthropods in history. Their name comes from their resemblance to today's scorpions. They lived as far back as 444 million years ago. Eurypterus is described as a giant genus of sea scorpion. They were able to grow as long as 2.5 meters, but many species were smaller. Their tails were weapons used to attack and shred prey to bits. They attack their prey with a spike at the end of their tail, much like a modern-day scorpion does. Their diet included fish and other marine animals. They also could have been cannibals that ate smaller versions of their genus. Eurypterids may have also been scavengers, searching shallow sea floors for carcasses. Eurypterus existed about 444 million years ago when arthropods evolved and ruled the seas. Most of those in this period went extinct due to the extinction called the Great Dying. This extinction event destroyed about 95% of marine life and about 70% of land organisms. Carbon rapidly released into the Earth's atmosphere initiated the Great Dying. Volcanoes released billions of tons of carbon. This carbon release caused global warming, which caused an inability to breathe for these animals. These factors led to their extinction at the end of the Permian period. The woolly rhinoceros had short, stocky legs, but it stood about 6 feet tall at the shoulders. Its body was covered in a thick reddish-brown fur. It was about 15 feet long from the tip of its snout to the base of its tail. These rhinos' most distinctive features were the large keratin horn on the top of the end of its snout, which was about 3 feet tall, and the secondary smaller horn near its eyes. These ancient creatures weighed about 1.7 to 2.2 tons, or 3400 to 4400 pounds, but they might have weighed even more. The woolly rhino had strong, massive teeth and a well-developed jaw, which were perfectly suited to the steppe grasses that made up nearly the entirety of their diet. The woolly rhinoceros lived during the Pliocene and Pleistocene epochs, during the time of the Ice Age, from about 3.6 million years ago until fewer than 15,000 years ago. They roamed all over the tundra and grasslands in the continent that is now Europe, as well as into parts of what is now Asia. The greatest threats to the woolly rhinoceros in the end were excessive hunting by humans, changing weather, and loss of habitat and food supply. On the other hand, juvenile and baby rhinos were a different matter. Baby woolly rhino predators included cave lions and prehistoric hyenas. The Archelon turtle had a body mass of 4,900 pounds. It measured up to 13.1 feet from nose to tail and 16 feet wide from one flipper tip to the other. The turtle likely fed on mollusks, jellyfish, and crustaceans found on the seafloor. Its primary predators were prehistoric sharks and the mosasaur. Although there are many gaps in scientific knowledge about the Archelon's mating and nesting habits, we do know that they nested on the beach. Like other sea turtles, they would have come out of the water at night and lay eggs beneath the sand surface. The Archelon lived during the late Cretaceous period 100 million years to 66 million years ago in the western interior seaway that once cut through the middle of North America. The prehistoric animal's fossil was found in 1895 in the pure shale geological formation of South Dakota, which was covered by this area 80.5 million years ago. Since that time, fossils of the sea turtle have also been found in Wyoming and North Dakota. The Archelon is believed to have died out at the end of the late Cretaceous period. This means it no longer existed after 66 million years ago. Scientists believe it became extinct because of the effects of climate change. One of the most distinctive and comical-looking megafauna mammals of prehistoric times, Glyptodon was essentially a dinosaur-sized armadillo with a huge, round, armored carapace, stubby turtle-like legs, and a blunt head on a short neck. As many commentators have pointed out, this Pleistocene mammal looked a bit like a Volkswagen beetle. The only thing Glyptodon lacked was a clubbed or spiked tail, a feature evolved by its close relative Doedicurus, 
not to mention the dinosaurs that most resembled it and which lived tens of millions of years earlier, Ankylosaurus and Stegosaurus. Discovered in the early 19th century, the type fossil of Glyptodon was initially mistaken for a specimen of Megatherium, until one enterprising naturalist thought to compare the bones with those of modern armadillo. The South American Glyptodon survived well into early historical time, only going extinct about 10,000 years ago, shortly after the last ice age, along with most its fellow megafauna mammals from around the world. This huge, slow-moving armadillo was probably hunted to extinction by early humans, who would have prized it not only for its meat but also for its roomy carapace. There is evidence that the earliest settlers of South America sheltered from the snow and rain under glyptodon shells. Leviathan Melville, commonly known as Leviathan, was an ancient whale that owned the oceans millions of years ago. The only thing we can tell is that it shared the waters with the megalodon shark. Other than that, Leviathan was the apex predator of the Miocene epoch. Concerning size, our current data suggest it was approximately the same size as the modern sperm whale. Records indicate that Leviathan's total length was likely around 13.5 to 17.5 meters, 44 to 57 feet, and weighed around 62 tons. However, its body size wasn't the only fearsome aspect of this creature. It also boasts the largest biting teeth, excluding tusks of any discovered animal. At over one foot long, the gaping mouth of the Leviathan would have been a terrifying sight. Because of its large size, the Leviathan did not likely have many natural predators. In fact, it probably preyed on other predators in the ocean. However, because it shared the waters with the megalodon shark, there likely would have been some epic battles between them if they had decided not to leave each other alone. One major contributing factor to Leviathan dying out was the water cooling during the early Pliocene epoch, which began around 5.3 million years ago. Another factor that played into their extinction was the increasing killer whale populations. Leviathan did not suddenly become prey. However, the competition for food became too much for this 62-ton sea monster and it couldn't keep up with the changing times. Mixotoxodon is known by fragmentary remains, usually mandible fragments and teeth. Although the general appearance probably was very similar to another toxodontid from the Pleistocene, its snout was cylindrical instead of the broad, hippo like muzzle of toxodon. The straight snout and the narrow lower incisors closely packed suggest that this animal had a different feeding strategy compared to their southern relative, although the teeth of both genera were adapted to deal with abrasive food. It was a rhino-sized animal with a weight of up to 3.8 tons, which makes it the largest member of Nota Angulata. Mixotoxodon is known from a single species, Mixotoxodon larensis. It is the only Nota Angulate known to have migrated out of South America during the Great American Interchange. Its fossils have been found in Northern South America, in Central America, in Mexico, in Eastern Texas. The genus was also one of the largest surviving Nota Angulates, along with the related genera such as the better known Toxodon. The name refers to the fact that Mixotoxodon combines characteristics typical of different toxodontid subfamilies. Metoposaurus lived in lakes and rivers of what is now Portugal during the late Triassic period between 200 and 230 million years ago. Metoposaurus algarvensis belongs to an extinct genus of primitive amphibians known from the Triassic of Germany, Italy, Poland and Portugal. These primitive salamander-like creatures lived at the same time as the first dinosaurs began their dominance, which lasted for over 150 million years and formed part of the ancestral stock from which modern amphibians such as frogs and newts evolved. It was the type of fierce predator that the very first dinosaurs had to put up with if they strayed too close to the water long before the glory days of Tyrannosaurus rex and Brachiosaurus. Most modern amphibians are pretty tiny and harmless. But back in the Triassic, these giant predators would have made lakes and rivers pretty scary places to be.